My roommate stole my identity to steal $400, so I set up a trap to catch her in the act. Here's what happened. Subscribe to Am I the Jerk on YouTube and hit the bell for notifications. So this happened my second semester dorming at my college campus. I had met my roommate at orientation and could kind of already tell she was going to be a pain in my butt. And I was right about that. I'd planned on moving rooms to be closer to some friends the next semester. But let me get down to the story. On our campus, you had to pay for meals using your student ID, which had a certain amount of money on it each semester. You could also use an app that you put your name and ID info into that makes it easier to pay. But the name and ID must match for it to work, which will be important later. Any funds from the fall semester would roll over into the spring, but then at the end of the spring, it would just expire. Because of this, and because I only ate once or twice a day, I had a ton saved up on my card. My roommate, on the other hand, did not. So I offered to pay for some of her meals from time to time in exchange for her picking up the food for us, which involved her using my card twice in person, and then she'd return it. Then one day, I noticed on my app that my card was being charged even when I wasn't ordering food. And not just a meal, like a meal for several people. This meant that whoever was ordering, I wonder who, either had to have stolen my ID card, which I had in my pocket when I got the charge, or was impersonating my info in the app, which are both big no-nos on my campus. I was quick to put two and two together and pretty ticked. I was initially going to confront her on it, but decided to formulate a plan instead. That day, I went and ordered a second ID card for $25 to use for later. As it took a couple weeks to get the new one, I let her charge several things to my card over a good two weeks. For her and her friends. And she wasn't very good at hiding it either. As they would come to our dorm and eat it. While I just screenshot and sent emails to the support team of the app about the charges. Knowing nothing would get done until I contacted someone in person. And one day it got even better. As you can buy groceries with the card off campus as well. She decided to pay for alcohol with my card. Which doesn't get pinged as an issue on my card due to me being over 21. But she was only 19. Not sure how she got it, but it was just the thing to finally act on my plan. I put my best sad face on and contacted the head of campus living and head of my dorm about the charges on my account. I dropped some hints that it could be my roommate and mentioned that I got a new ID and asked what I should do. I was told to order a new card, and once I got it, to deactivate my current ID and use the new one for purchases now. Making my old ID have a balance of zero and also to ping if someone uses it to buy anything. They also told me they would be visiting my dorm to discuss the issue with my my roommate. I accepted that and waited. They sent the confirmation email that they would be visiting and I just decided to add more fuel to the fire. My roommate was groaning about not having the funds for food in front of me in our dorm. I told her I really couldn't help her as I was running low on funds. And she just kind of laughed it off and left the room to probably go use my old ID. I deactivated my first card right after she left. And surprise, surprise, she used my info to pay. Except when she tried to pay for her and her friends this time, it was declined. And it pinged that my ID was used. Campus security was called and she was escorted back to our dorm. Pretty much perfect timing for our meeting with campus living. She was scared out of her mind when they came to the dorm to talk and look through all her stuff. On her phone, still logged into the app, was my ID information and name. And in her dorm closet was a half full bottle of cheap vodka. And on my phone was a screenshot of said unauthorized vodka purchase. In the end, she was forced to pay me back all the funds she used, in cash, reported for underage drinking, which automatically suspends you from campus living for at least a year, and would have on her record that she performed identity theft, which I also could have charged her for outside of the school. In the end, I got to have my own dorm for the remainder of that semester and even part of the semester after, since it wasn't put as an available room for new dormers. I did get all my money back from her parents, who were so embarrassed and apologized profusely. And when she did eventually come back to campus, no one wanted to dorm with the jerk because they knew she'd stolen her roommate's ID. I think in the end, she ended up having to rent off campus. 
That really sucks, honestly. Like, you were trying to do something nice for your roommate and offer to pay for a couple of meals and trusted her with that information. It's really unfortunate that she felt the need to go ahead and use it the way she did. She kind of ruined a good thing for herself by just wanting to go out and party with her friends, I guess. I'm sorry, but that's not your obligation to pay for her good time. You were offering to pay when it was maybe a meal here or there that you guys were sharing. Not for her to have free use. She's lucky you didn't decide to take this further, because another person would have, and she would have been in a lot more trouble. You can submit your own stories to be featured here on the channel. The story submission link is in the description below. And if you want to listen to some vibey music in the background, check out Easy Mode, also linked below. And don't forget to subscribe. Entitled Karen insists that I serve her on my day off. Every once in a while when I have a weekend off, I'll go to my job and sit at the bar one of those nights because the bartender is a great friend of mine. I obviously don't wear my uniform or anything close to that when I do this. I do have some visible tattoos and a pixie cut, and am the only female in the place with one. So I'm fairly recognizable even if you aren't a regular of mine. So there I am enjoying my drink when a customer I've seen maybe three or four times comes up and taps me on the shoulder. I've waited on her once and she was one of those entitled customer is always right types. So we'll be referring to her as E going forward. You work here, right? Yes, ma'am, but I have the night off. Finally able to relax here for once. I said that quite cheerily because I was actually in a great mood. Well, since you do work here, I need you to go to the manager's office and see if my sunglasses are there. The manager's office is basically in the kitchen, like most places. I'm sorry, what? Keep in mind, she could have asked her waitress or the bartender this, and she was very blunt and rude when saying it. I'm sorry, ma'am. I'm actually not allowed to go back there while I'm off duty, but I'm sure one of my co-workers would. Still pretty cheery. Still in a good mood. And then... No, I want you to do it. You've probably been on break too long anyway. Stop being lazy. <laughs> what? It wasn't necessarily what she said, but her entitled tone that irritated me. And I had a couple in me already. Meanwhile, my bartender friend can't get a word in edgewise to offer to go get them for her. So she just starts giggling her butt off because she knows what's about to happen. Cue every server's dream. Actually, I'm not lazy. I'm here on a night off, spending time with my friend and having a few drinks. You're being an uppity B-word and killing my vibe. So please screw off and ask someone who's actually on the clock. Okay, thanks. Bye. Right then, as if the gods were on my side, my awesome manager walks behind the bar from the kitchen. And he had heard everything. So she immediately took her rage out on him. He's really chill and doesn't give a crap about people like this. More headache than it's worth to him. He just waltzes back to the office, gives her her crappy fake Dolce & Gabbana sunglasses, and tells her to kindly pay her bill and not come back. Then he offers to buy me another drink out of his own pocket, and he proceeds to give the waitress who had the misfortune of serving her $10 to make up for the lack of tip she was probably about to get. I adore him. In retrospect, I probably shouldn't have said what I said, but the jerk's not allowed to come back anyway, so whatevs. I mean, you tried to tell her nicely. It's not your fault she wasn't listening. I don't really understand what this woman's issue was with you that she felt you had to go get it specifically. I guess you were just the first person she spotted that she recognized maybe, but either way, that's not how you talk to someone especially someone that you want to do something for you. Sure, our original poster could have handled this a little better, but you know what? I don't blame them. This lady needed to be brought down a peg, and her not being able to come back to the restaurant is probably best for all the servers there. Annoying cashier wants to waste my time, so I make sure she wastes hers as well. So this is the deal. Yesterday, I get a call from a friend of mine that the money I lent him to move out of state was going to be paid by wire transfer. The place he used is about 20 minutes away, so I jump in the car and head on up. 
I stand in line for 30 minutes to get to the cashier, spend another 10 minutes verifying everything only for her to look at my ID. Oh, I didn't see they put Junior after your name. I'm not going to release the money till they fix it. Okay, let me call them real quick. I don't care what you do, but you won't do it from right here. You'll have to go outside to do that. So off I go to get two letters added to the transaction. Another 30 minutes to take care of that. Finally, the company rep calls her store to tell her to release the funds. Then, another 10 minutes to wait online again. So, now I'm a couple of hours into this for two letters. My petty meter is full by now. When she asks me how I want my cash, I reply, $1 bills, please. What? That'll take forever. My shift ends in a few minutes. I don't care. I'll still take it in ones. Thank you. So she pulls out the stack of ones and starts to count bundles. No, I'm going to need you to verify each of those stacks are correct. Would you please break them down? With much grumbling and huffing and puffing under her breath, we finally come to the end of counting the ones. All 1,000 of them. You know, I guess at that point you've already wasted so much time, you don't really care about wasting a little bit more. Especially when it's going to end in a little bit of satisfaction on your end. I think me personally, I'd have been looking to get out of there as quickly as possible. But hey, I guess you didn't really have anything to do that afternoon. My entitled sister is always stealing my food, so I embarrassed her in front of all of our family and her friends. I come from a family of six. My parents, my older sister, my older brother, my little brother, and me. Often, in order to bribe us into good behavior, our parents would buy us our favorite candy to munch on in the car. Now, I've never exactly been a giving person. Not huge on sharing just for the sake of sharing. My parents, however, were trying to raise respectful and generous kids, and often forced me to share things even when I didn't want to. That's all fine and good, except that my sister abused this sister. System. She would say she didn't want a bag of candy. Then, once we were on the road, she'd start taking candy from all three of the brothers. That really ticked me off. I didn't get candy often, as my mom didn't like feeding us sugary food. So when I got my own bag of Sour Patch watermelons, I wanted to eat every last one of them myself. Besides, my parents would always offer to buy her a bag of candy for herself. She would just refuse because she knew she could leech off the rest of us. So after a point, I started refusing her request for candy. But that didn't fly with my mom because that was being selfish. So she would force me to hand over the candy. One time, I even said when I purchased my own bag at CVS, Sister, I'm not going to give you any of my candy. If you want Sour Patch, you buy your own right now i'm fine i don't want a whole bag of candy fast forward 20 minutes into the car ride and my father was requisitioning a candy to give my sister as i sat fuming this went on for years my whole life really and i hated it i would hide my candy when i got it i would try and keep it out of her reach but always a parent would intervene Fast forward to my sister's college graduation. She's now 22. I'm a senior in high school at this point, and we're up at her school at a fancy restaurant celebrating after she had graduated that morning. In attendance are all immediate and some extended family, some close friends of my sister and her long-term boyfriend who I was meeting for the first time. So enough people for the following to be embarrassing to my family. Our meal ends and my mother offers to buy a nice dessert for anyone who wants it. My brothers, my dad and I all take her up on this. I ordered a vanilla bean cheesecake with burnt sugar bird's nest on top. My mother repeatedly offers to buy my sister anything she wants, but my sister says she couldn't possibly eat a full dessert right now and turns it down every time. The food arrives and everyone's staring at mine. I'm sitting right at the head of the table in full view of everyone, so it's hard not not to look. And aside from the cake slice being large and delicious looking, the burnt sugar bird's nest is huge and ornate, hollow on the inside like an old timey brass globe or something. Honestly, it was really impressive. And right as the food gets placed in front of us, my sister says, I'll just have a bite of everyone's. At this point, I'm seeing red, having flashbacks to all the times my food has been stolen. Logically, the right thing to do would have been to just hand over one bite. I mean, it was her grand situation. It was a huge cake and it would have been no loss, but it became a matter of principle. 
So the moment she says this, in one fell swoop, in full view of everyone at the table, I sweep up my slice of cheesecake and stuff the entire thing into my mouth at once. Shattering the sugar nest, crumbs falling everywhere, in front of my whole family and some college students close to my sister, who, again, I never met in my life. My sister stares appalled and says, Did you do that just so I wouldn't get any? And I look at her, cheeks ballooning out like a chipmunk, face covered in cheesecake and graham, dead in the eyes, and nod. There was a fair bit of shocked silence at that moment and in the very tense car ride home, but to this day, the jerk never asks for anything from me anymore. I think the most shocking thing about this story is that our original poster never did something like this sooner. It's quite a childish thing to do. I'm surprised you didn't do this when you were a young kid or something. Maybe you were just waiting for the perfect moment. And honestly, I think you found it. We got a special occasion, family and friends present, and something very nice to just shove your face into. I guess it really does kind of paint a better picture versus just stuffing a pack of gummy bears in your mouth. I do gotta say though, that slice of cake sounded amazing. I guess you still did get to enjoy it, just faster. My supervisors at work got super strict about managing people's time, so we got even more strict. I used to work in a mid-sized company in the engineering department. One of the managers started to get upset because if he walked around at exactly 8.30, hour start time, everyone was not in their seats. He felt that the engineers were being too lax with their time. The edict went out that all engineers had to be in their seats exactly at start time. I told my boss that I was not planning on complying because I was a salaried professional and expected to be treated as such, and that if they didn't trust me to put in an honest week's work, then they should fire me instead of micromanaging me. The older and much wiser engineers took a different approach. They all showed up five minutes early to make sure they were in their seats exactly at 8.30, but also set an alarm for 5 p.m. and would literally drop everything they were doing exactly at 5 and leave the building. Is the manager having a meeting that was supposed to end at 5 but is running a little late? Well, at 5 p.m., a series of alarms would go off and everyone would stand up in the middle of a meeting to leave. Does operations need need technical support at 4.55? They have exactly 5 minutes on the phone with the engineer before he'll have to get off the phone. Is someone trying to discuss a work-related issue at 8.28? Better wait a couple minutes because no one in the engineering department is answering work-related questions for another 2 minutes. Needless to say, the policy didn't last very long. For whatever reason, that's something management never seems to take into consideration. That if that's how you want to play things, it's going to work both ways. You need your employees and your employees give up a lot for you. Sometimes it's just not appreciated until it's taken to extremes like this. Only then do they realize how much extra their employees actually put in for them. I told my daughter she's jealous and bitter and always will be until she gets a life. My daughter Bethany is now 21 and she has a stepsister that's 18. I got remarried when Bethany was 19 and in college. This was a long time coming and Bethany gets along well with my wife and at the beginning her stepsister. My stepdaughter Lindsay is very similar to Bethany. They got along great at the beginning but now don't due to Bethany's jealousy issue with Lindsay. It all started when Lindsay got into track and beat Bethany personal best. After that, she was in a competition with her. They did a 5k together, and, well, Lindsay did better. The final straw was Lindsay getting into a college Bethany didn't get into. She's been nasty to Lindsay since, so no relationship on that part. We were driving today and Bethany went on a rant about Lindsay. She looked at her Snapchat story and saw she got into a sorority. Bethany tried to get into one and it didn't work out. After 5 minutes, I had had enough and told her she's jealous and bitter towards Lindsay. And she won't stop being until she gets her own life and stops watching Lindsay's life so closely. She called me a jerk for picking Lindsay's side. Also, yes, I have had this conversations multiple times with her before about her jealousy. It hasn't worked. 
Yikes. Honestly, I do feel kind of bad for Bethany here. I think the feelings that she's having are perfectly natural. She's just not controlling them very well. She feels like she's being replaced with a better version of herself, when that's not the case. But you can understand why she might kind of feel that way. Unfortunately, Lindsay's the one taking the brunt of all of this jealousy, and she doesn't deserve it. It doesn't sound like she's mean to Bethany on any front. It's just that she's getting everything that Bethany wants. And I totally understand how that could get irritating for Bethany after a while. I don't think you're being the jerk for bringing the hammer down just a little bit. She needed to see how petty she's really being. There's always going to be someone who's better at something than you. In this case, your sister happens to be better than you at these things. I'm sure there's plenty of things that you're better at than she is. I agree with our poster. You can't be focusing on that person's life. Focus on your own. Make your own better. When you subscribe, make sure to hit the bell to turn on notifications. Put the playlist on in the background to finish listening to all the stories. Or if you want some vibey music to put on in the background, check out Easy Mode. If you like Am I the Jerk, give Am I the Genius a shot. Everything linked in the description.